Hi, I'm Marcel James, and this is The Pulse. Today, I'm going to discuss how we can take a Pamela Reif approach to fitness and combine it to a scientific approach of a David Sinclair. I've broken down some tools for you to help you through the diet and exercise routines to make things easier for you. Basically, I'm going to talk about changing your centerpiece each day, closing any open back doors, planning your poisons, and sharing accountability. And I'm gonna intersperse these comments throughout the discussion of diet, exercise, and also dealing with setbacks that come up. When I talk about dieting, yes, I take a lot of supplements, but there are other ways to add supplemental molecules to your diet. One of the backwards engineering paths you can take is to go up to a site like Do Not Age, read the supplements, see what foods. They do a great job of listing different foods that their supplements are derived from and just eat those foods. They can be broccoli, they can be beets, they can be nuts, they can be berries. It's another way to get these substances that have been shown to give you health results or longevity results and get them into your body without the expense and without maybe some of the risks involved with taking an unknown molecule into your body every day. Now, I take supplements. I feel great taking them. I have a risk-reward tolerance that I've decided upon based on my age and how much time we have to find out the specific impacts of all these supplements. But your risk-reward ratio may be a little different than mine. And so what I would suggest is to take some of the foods that we found to be healthy and supplement your current diet with some of those foods. So some of what we talk about when we talk about dieting is adding things. Some of what we talk about when we talk about our diet is taking things away. Sugar, processed foods, alcohol. I would try to either displace those, and I'm going to discuss some ways you could do that, give you again some tips, or just eliminate them altogether. Sugar, processed foods, for example. I find I like muffins. I like cakes. I like cookies. I like these, these sweet fixes during the day. So what I've done is replace them, displace them with things like berries, nuts, uh, a super yogurt that I make every day. And I find myself feeling better after I eat those things and looking forward to them. Another thing that I do is in Germany, we have a lot of bakeries. We, they're, we're flooded with them. They're everywhere. And once in a while, I like to have a pastry or something uh, from a bakery. Those are much better than the stuff you'd buy packaged in the store. So you can either find a fresh bakery and eat something that's a lot better for you, even though there are some carbs and some sugars involved, or you can bake yourself. I like the idea of baking yourself because you can control the ingredients, you can displace some of the ingredients, put more fresh fruit in, less sugars. Um, you can even change the flour if you have some intolerances to certain flours. So baking is also an activity. So it actually keeps you busy, occupies your mind, you burn calories while you're baking. Intermittent fasting is a, an example of taking away and you can apply a Pamela Reef approach by just looking at it at 10, 15 minute blocks each day. Basically, reducing the time that you're eating each day in incrementally by 10 or 15 minutes. In a few days, you can erase an hour or two from your eating window, giving your body more time to recover from eating, digestion, and you can use that time to exercise or recover from exercise. Exercise is the next thing I want to focus on. Also give you some tips and tricks to make more use out of your time exercising. Now, a lot of times when we talk about exercise, I look at it as a spectrum of activity. I'm exercising four or five hours. I've worked my way up from the lower end of the spectrum to a pretty extreme side of the spectrum. I'm exercising a lot. I'm exercising pretty intensely. But wherever you are on that spectrum, the things I'm going to discuss with you can go a long way to helping you. For example, I had some setbacks. I mentioned setbacks. In January, I had a couple injuries. So I had to re rehab, recover from those. One of them was a pretty painful lower back sprain because I was taking NMN, getting a lot of energy, and just walking out the door without proper stretching, without a proper warm up. So I've since really gone to work to find a head to toe stretching routine. And I'm gonna post that soon in a complete video and discuss it. For me, it's a 40 minute routine, but I'm condensing the video down to 20 minutes so that you can at least get all the steps, then just extend the times for certain stretches. Stretching is great 
also to make better use of the dietary supplements or dietary supplemental foods that you're taking in because stretching improves your circulation, gets your blood flowing to extremities and brings that nutrition to your extremities. We talk about nutrition, we're talking about not just dietary supplements, but also vitamins, minerals. These things are all maximized when you stretch. So stretching is an under talked about routine. So you can go back to Pamela Reef, take some of her stretching techniques. You're gonna maximize some of your David Sinclair approaches with your supplementing, your intermittent fasting and correcting your diet. Another thing I like to do a lot is walk. Walking is basically free physio and walking creates some real opportunities because if you'll block out a period of time for a walk every day, you can vary that walk. For example, introducing interval training is gonna maximize the time you spend walking. So if it's 30 minutes, you're gonna burn more calories and get more exercise out of that 30 minutes if you interval train. So what do I mean by interval training? Basically, the concept of interval training is to exercise light to moderately for two minutes, and then 20 seconds of some more intense exercise and continue to alternate those two. The science has shown that you burn more calories when you interval train than if you just stay with one activity. The first way after my own injury was to change the speeds of my walking patterns. So I would walk a little bit slower than usual and then speed up at times. Eventually that became a light jog. I would interval or pulse into a jog and then go back to walking. Interesting thing happened when I did that is I might have some pain at first when I was walking, again, because I was recovering from a setback. But that pain was reduced after the jog. So pulsing, that pulsing activity, coming back down to walking a regular speed, I had less pain. And that is one of the other powers of interval training. Not only do you burn more calories, but you can sort of correct things or reduce some of the discomfort that you might have from an activity by temporarily pulsing or reaching a higher impact routine and then backing off and going into your lower impact routine. I'm using weights, specifically dumbbell weights. A lot of people talk about weight training, how important it is to prevent osteoporosis, deterioration of your muscles and bones and joints, but we don't talk specifics about weights. I have a number, you can see behind me, a number of different dumbbells. I worked my way off. I started off with very low weights, went to more moderate, and some now a little bit heavier weights. And what that does is sort of builds you up and it makes it a lot more tolerable. You don't have to, I'm not going to a gym where I might feel uncomfortable around other people during a, a, a pandemic recovery or just the fact that I'm not going to be as strong as the guy uh, on the bench press machine. So it doesn't bother me at all to stay at home and do whatever my routine is, wherever I am on the spectrum of activity and strength. It's a lot more positive experience. Another benefit of dumbbells is it's free weights as opposed to a fixed machine Nautilus style routine that can limit your range of motion. That can be good. That can be bad. With free weights, you want to start off low and work your way up so that you build up your strength to avoid any injury from a strange movement that you might make because you're not in practice. Even though you feel stronger, starting with a lower weight and working your way up is a very wise approach when dealing with dumbbells. Another thing you can do to exercise more, basically keep it more low impact so it's not really discouraging you, is to view an activity as part of your exercise routine. When I say I exercise four to five hours a day, that includes time I spend playing tennis or even walking with my family or even swimming. We view those more as activities than we do exercise, but they are, we are exercising during those activities. So find activities to work, socialize, spend time with your family, find some activities that you can include your fitness and your workout. Now setbacks that can happen along the way could be dietary, impulse eating, or binge drinking, or you could have an injury, or these things can be combined. Say you go out like I did, get injured, you wanna to drink to sort of soothe the pain, but you're actually causing more harm than you are good. It's temporarily soothing, but the next morning you're healing a lot slower. So you're a lot smarter to just focus on the recovery. When I talk about changing your centerpiece, I'm talking about what it is you look forward to each day and each week. If you can slide something else in that's a lot more positive and make that your centerpiece, 
What am I doing today? Well, I'm going to drink with my buddies tonight. What am I doing today? Well, I'm going to go play tennis with my buddies this afternoon. That's an example of how I can displace some of those centerpieces that I had before that were important to me, value something that's a lot healthier, and centerpiece that. To be honest with you, my day has become full of healthy centerpieces, and I look forward to them. I look forward to getting up, having my coffee, completing my intermittent fast till 11, 11.30 in the morning. I look forward to that first meal. It's a very healthy yogurt. I take supplements in the morning before, basically with, and also after that first meal. So I look forward to all of those steps. Those have become my new centerpieces when I'm taking a supplement, when I'm eating a healthy food, when I'm exercising, when I'm stretching, when I'm lifting weights. Those are my new centerpieces, as opposed to before, where I used to look forward to some sweets during the afternoon or something else. Closing the back door. What that means is we don't always plan to go drink. We plan to go out. We plan to meet up with certain people. We plan to meet up with a friend and have cake and coffee or tea in the afternoon. You need to be careful about closing some of those back doors to relapsing, turning into an excuse to drink or an excuse to eat. You need to replace those back doors as well because you may not intend to go out and drink. You're just going to go out. You stop drinking. Suddenly everyone's drinking. You start drinking. Maybe try to go out in the context of something that doesn't include drinking. Close the back door. Planning your poison. So you've decided you walk by that bakery and you're going to have that muffin. You're going to have that cookie. Once in a while is okay. No one's saying you have to stop, nor do I stop enjoying anything that you like. But what I try to do is plan those poisons. For me, it's a walnut danish. Now, they're not super sweet. They're packed full of walnuts, so it's not such a bad poison, but it's still something that it's not included in my daily routine. So what I do is I look at it and I say, I want that. I'm going to have one of those. I really like those. I'm going to do it next Tuesday. I planned it. My body doesn't know the difference. Oftentimes we say, I'm going to have it at three o'clock. I'll buy it now. I'll have it at three o'clock. And that eases back that impulse because you're basically telling yourself, yes, you're going to have it. And then you kind of look forward to it. Your body doesn't know the difference between or your brain, your subconscious between delaying it till 3 p.m. and delaying it till next week on Tuesday. You still get that pause. That pause function, for me at least, still works. I know I'm going to have it. So I've kind of appeased that impulse, put it off till next Tuesday. Interestingly, oftentimes I get to next Tuesday and I go, wow, I made it five days without that walnut thing. I can do another few days. And so it's easier then to push the reset button on that new plan. Sharing accountability basically is what I'm doing with you all the time, every week. It's one of the reasons I look forward to and make videos. I'm trying to have this progress and then I'm trying to go out and actively share it. It's for you, I want to share it with you, but it's also mostly on a personal level for me that I share my progress and the things that I'm doing because it kind of keeps me honest. And so you don't have to have a YouTube channel to share accountability. You can have a friend that joins you. You can approach somebody who you may feel could also better themselves with exercise and dieting and say, hey, I'm going to go on this journey. I'm going to follow Pamela Reef. I'm going to follow David Sinclair. I'm going to listen to the pulse a bit. And I'm going to kind of go on this journey. You want to join with me. And then you have somebody to collaborate with, discuss with how you're doing. And whether it's a setback, whether it's a success, you've got somebody to talk to about it. It improves your social activity, which is also life extending and healthy. Just makes things a whole lot more fun and doable when you don't feel like you're just doing it alone strictly for yourself. You're doing it for a friend or a family member or a group. And that's why our group is here. I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you'll comment, get involved, join the Facebook group. The links are all in the description. The links to the supplements that I take along with the discount code are all in the description as well. Thank you for watching. I hope this gives you some tools to sort of better yourself for your own diet and exercise goals. See you soon.